Hello everyone. So today's case is going to be about Maya Mallet. This is a case that I feel like I've seen on YouTube a lot. I've heard a lot about. And I'm yeah, I think it's pretty recently that some movement has been made in this case. And when I first heard about this case, it was just like at a standstill. So I'm I don't want to say I'm excited to talk about it. Um I want to talk about this case and the new developments, or recent developments, I should say. And this is probably going to be a bit of a longer video because there is a lot, a lot of information. I actually had to cut some information out that I felt didn't particularly pertain to Maya, or there's a lot of information about her husband and stuff like that that's kind of shady. That I just chose to kind of cut so I will leave my resources down below like always just so um, you can look into it if you want to but let's go ahead and jump into this video so Maya was born in the Philippines and grew up in Hawaii where she would meet a man named Larry Millette who would be her future husband she was born on May 1st 1981 and she is the fifth of six children to Pablito and Nomi Tablanza. She academically excelled throughout school. And in 1995, her family, her family immigrated to Honolulu. She would attend Radford High School, where she participated in many school clubs like dance and theater and many other academic organizations. At 17, she worked at a McDonald's by Pearl Harbor, and that is where she would meet Larry. She graduated high school with honors, and that was while she dated Larry. And then on May 21st, at age 19, they would get married. She attended the University of Hawaii in Manoa, while Larry went for his Navy training in Virginia. So the two of them eventually moved to Southern California, and she continued her education at the University of California, San Diego, where she majored and graduated with honors in inter international studies. She worked as a civilian contract specialist in Naval Base San Diego and dedicated most of her life to working as a civilian government employee. In 2010, she gave birth to her first daughter, Laura May. Her second daughter, Mel Melani, was born a year later, and in 2016, she gave birth to her last child, who was her son, Lazarus. And her kids have always been close to her heart. She loved traveling around the world with her children. Like, there's a lot of photos of her with her kids. I'm, If I include any, their faces will be blurred out, but I might just not include those photos just because they are still very young, and I don't want to put any minors on the internet. But if you want to see her and her beautiful family, um, there's plenty of them on Google. And you can tell that she has so much love for them. But getting into the case, Maya was last seen at her home on, Pase on Paseo Los Gatos in Chula Vista, California around 5 p.m. on January 7th, 2021. Her disappearance occurred two days before the family was set to travel to Big Bear for their daughter's birthday. And it doesn't clarify which daughter in any of the articles I read, so maybe it doesn't matter. I just wanted to let y'all know. Two days later, her sister... Uh, Mary Chris called Chula Vista police to report her missing. Maria's car was still at home, but phone calls were going straight to her voicemail. So investigators say that they learned Maya and Mary had been having marital issues dating back to at least a year. Could have been longer, but at least a year. There is a report that Larry had once allegedly choked Maya until she passed out, and that Larry discovered Maya had an affair. I did see some articles, like maybe two, that touched on her messaging another man. I did not include this in this video. I just wanted to be focused on the case and a quick little timeline and the new news. But I did want to let you know that there are some articles that supposedly she was messaging another man. So I will say that that's not an excuse to, you know, abuse her. But hey, that was his choice. Allegedly his choice. Um... But apparently he had discovered that she'd been having an affair. And in the days prior to her going missing, police alleged Maya was talking 
was taking, sorry, was taking steps to divorce Larry and that he had, quote, an overwhelming motive to prevent that from happening. So, reviews of Larry's internet history and the months leading up to his wife's disappearance shows that he made hundreds of emails to so-called spellcasters requesting that they make Amaya fall back in love with him or for them to incapac- incapacitate her so she would have to depend on him according to an affidavit. And he did not further ask for help after January 9th. So, she went missing January 7th. He stopped asking for help after January 9th. Not saying anything. Allegedly. And I'm saying this because um, this has not went to trial yet, so we don't know if he's guilty or not. Um, I have my opinions, which I will have to be very careful about because he seems like a very vindictive man. Um, I didn't include any of the articles where he's just like trying to rip into the police department for like doing their job and he felt bullied but like hey those are also down below um but i just want to point out that date but also that he was going as far as to asking random people on the internet to incapacitate his wife so that she wouldn't leave him huh but now i have a little timeline um, starting from when she was last seen to, um, I'm looking to basically up to where we are now. Um, so the rest of this is going to be the timeline and that is also going to involve the new updates. A lot of this did get cut out if it was stuff that was just kind of like little stuff that really didn't add anything. Um, like stuff, like I said, against Larry that I didn't feel like really added much. So January 7th, 2021, she was, you know, last seen near her home. Family at the time said it was possible she may have gone hiking in the canyon behind the property. Her car was in the driveway. Her phone was off. Larry said he initially thought she had left to have some alone time, but as time passed, he began to have doubts. Detectives report that on this day, surveillance footage footage captured Maya parking her Jeep Rubicon in front of her home at 4.42 p.m. There is no footage of her leaving her home. A review of her communications revealed she had told a friend on January 6th that she informed Larry of her intention to file for a divorce, whether he likes it or not. And this is what she says. She says, I'm done trying to make it amicable for the sake of the kids. And that is what the message said. Detectives learned that the two had an argument on the evening of January 7th. Her last known communication came at 8.15 p.m. when she shared an ad with a family member through Facebook Messenger. And her phone um, actually stopped at 1.25 a.m. the next day. Like, her phone activity stopped the next day at that time. January 8th, which is the third consecutive day, Larry was reported as being, quote, unexpectedly absent from work. There are messages from his dad and boss reaching out to him because they were worried and they hadn't heard from him. And this is what police believe he was doing. And this is via an affidavit or via the affidavit. So he told police he left the house at 6.45 a.m. to take his four-year-old son to Solana Beach to give Maya some space. Surveillance shows that at 5.58 a.m., Larry moved his Lexus GX460, which had been backed into the driveway and repositioned it at an angle while backing up to the garage and it says that the way this this would been moved in it was impossible to see like what he was doing um like if he's putting something in the car the way it was like the surveillance couldn't catch it um the car would leave at 6 45 a.m and return at 6 6 p.m when police asked larry to point at on a map to where he spent the day, he pointed to Torrey Pine State Beach, four miles from Solana Beach. They were unable to confirm his whereabouts on that day. Records show his phone was shut off until 6.34 p.m. And I just want to say, it's kind of weird that your phone is shut off. Um, because what if there's an emergency with your other children? What if there's an emergency with your wife? What if you are having an emergency? What if there's literally anything going on that you need your phone for why is it shut off from the morning until 6 34 p.m like that is a very long time 
And as a parent, you shouldn't have your phone shut off. Just saying. So Maya's brother went to their home at 6.30 p.m. to check on her. There he met with his nine-year-old niece, who had been told that Maya had been up in their room for the past 11 hours and that the children had not been fed. He went inside and knocked on her door, but she never answered. Her brother said he'd spoken to Larry that night and that Larry said he'd been working all day and couldn't account for Maya's whereabouts. I just want to say something real quick. That if he had been doing something, like disposing of the body, it's really fucked that he left his children home all day, didn't even feed them? Like, are you joking? Like, if he's trying to make it seem like he was gone all day? What? I... Still, like, I couldn't fathom leaving your children home all day knowing that they're not going to eat and knowing that they're going to say something about her mom not coming down. I just, I don't understand him. And I don't know if the brother, like, after he knocked and she didn't answer, like, why he just didn't do something about that. Like, if my niece says, hey, mom ha- mommy hasn't come out of her room for 11 hours and she's not answering when I knock on the door, I'm calling for help. I don't know why the brother didn't do that. It didn't specify, and I found that to be super weird. But, hey, the choices were made, I guess. So, moving on to January 9th, Maya is reported missing by Americris. January 13th, dozens of friends and family and volunteers search for her at Mount San Miguel Miguel Park, which is a short distance from, from the family home. Larry stayed home with the kids. And I did think it was weird that he stayed home, but I guess it's, I understand, you know, with the kids and everything. They're already going through a lot because one of, I think the oldest daughter is nine. She's old enough to know that her mom, for some reason, isn't there. It's probably a lot of stress, and you don't want them looking for their mom in case something is to be found. So I didn't give him too much heat for that, but it was noted in the articles I was reading, so I wanted to note it. January 23rd, police served a search warrant at the family's home to obtain any evidence and clues for her whereabouts, and it's unclear if anything was found. February 3rd, Chula visited PD and announced that Larry had retained an attorney and was no longer cooperating with him, and he had been cooperating with them up until that date. And to me, when your wife goes missing and you stop cooperating with the police and you get an attorney, I immediately just, it's red flags everywhere. Everywhere is just red flags. It's just, if that was my loved one, I'm working with police. I don't think it's where that he got an attorney exactly. It's just where that he stopped cooperating. February 5th, a news conference is held outside Chula Vista PD and family asks for help to look for Maya. February 14th and 15th, the search extended out of the South Bay to the Glamis Sand Dunes as the Sand Dunes was one of her favorite places to visit and The search yielded few results. February 23rd, a billboard of her disappearance goes up on Main Street. February 26th, private investigator Bill Garcia joins the search, working for five days for the family at no cost. March 14th, 150 volunteers scour uh, Lower Stay Lakes by foot. With help of drones and boats. March 28th, Maricris says Maya set up an appointment with a divorce lawyer on the same day she went missing, and she was scheduled to meet them on the 12th, but that she never, like, arrived. Obviously, we know that. April 7th, Chula Vista PD released the first of new updates. Um, and that is 47 family members, friends, and neighbors, and witnesses were interviewed. 12 search warrants were written for residences, vehicles, cell phones, electronic devices, call detail records, financial records, social media, and cloud data. And more than 40 tips were reviewed on her location. April 11th, new audio recordings are shared. After several loud bangs, similar to gunshots, can be heard near the home. At 10 p.m. on January 7th, 
and it was reported by a neighbor. There was also sounds of children playing outside about a half hour later. April 12th, Richard and Mary Chris um, appear on Dr. Phil and say that Larry won't allow the children to see or speak to the family. April 21st, another update from the police department. They say that they are aware of the audio recordings from January 7th, you know, the sound of those supposed gunshots and children. They had conducted eight more interviews, four more search warrants were written, and a creation of a multi-agency working group was also created. May 1st, the family celebrates Amaya's 40th birthday, and Larry and the kids don't attend. That is a little bit weird for me. Um, it's not like they're searching for Maya, they're just celebrating their Maya's birthday. It's kind of weird that he wouldn't have his kids go see her family and celebrate with them. Um, it's unclear if maybe he did anything with the kids. I didn't see anything about that. May 4th, n- there are more new updates from the PD. So they had begun work with the Cold Case Foundation. One more interview had been conducted. Seven additional warrants were written and more than 55 tips were reviewed. May 7th, another warrant served at the Millet home. They spent nearly seven hours at the property. Investigators were observed hauling boxes out of the house and placing them in a white evidence van. May 10th, petition for a gun violence restraining order against Larry was filed, um, and the petition shows he had eight firearms registered in his possession and another 14 guns with unknown serial numbers. Um, Larry said he knew they were coming for his guns and gave multiple firearms to his friends. July 1st, the third warrant served at the Mullet home, and there were also 68 total interviews now conducted. Um, now 50 total warrants and nearly 100 tips reviewed. July 21st, Larry is named a person of interest. October 19th, investigators announced Larry was arrested on suspicion of murder in Maya's case. He was arrested by Chula Vista SWAT team at 11.42 a.m. In total, there were 67 search warrants, 87 interviews, 130 tips, and over, and this was all over a nine-month investigation. So, even though her body is missing and it's still not been found, detectives say that the law is very clear about filing charges in the absence of a body. And this is a quote from detectives. They say, quote, In fact, there is case law that he will be used that we will be using in this case that makes it ev- even more clear that a missing body is circumstantial evidence, that there was foul play, and that this is a murder because somebody who takes their own life cannot hide their own body, end quote. On October 21st, Larry appears in court for the first time, and of course he denies killing Maya. November 4th, Larry's bail request is denied. February 28th of this, I believe it's of this year, or it's of 2022. Um, He appeared in court for a short readiness hearing. September 27th, a psychiatrist finds Larry mentally competent to stand trial, allowing the case against him to move forward. So yes, that was in 2022, I'm sorry. So the case against him is moving forward. January 7th of this year, It is the two-year anniversary of her disappearance, and people hike to honor her. January 11th, a preliminary hearing began, and on January 25th, a judge rules that he will stand trial um, after a few days of the preliminary hearing, and that is where we are now. I have not seen any updates since then about when the trial will be starting, if there is going to be picking a jury anytime soon, nothing like that. I will be keeping a close eye on this. I'm sure when he starts going to trial, it's just going to be like blowing off because this has been a very popular case for people to speak about. My thoughts, I'm going to keep them a bit subdued just because he has not went to trial yet. But I'm going to say that I think he is very suspicious and I think more than likely he did something. Um, it's just really weird, like his uh, Google searches um, about the spellcaster thing 
and how he stopped asking help after the ninth. How he stopped cooperating with police. It's just really weird. Also, how he won't allow his children to see Maya's family. It's really weird to me. I definitely think he may know something or he has something to do with it. I'm going to leave my thoughts there because this is all alleged. We don't know if he did anything yet. And I'm sure when this case starts, a whole lot more is going to come out. And so when that starts coming out, I will also be updating you guys. I don't know if I'm going to be doing like one big update after the trial or if I'm going to be doing, you know, um, updates as, as it's going on like a lot of channels do. But I will be updating you guys. Um, what do you guys think? I know, I think everybody I've heard who speak about this, they don't trust Larry. And I feel like in most cases where a spouse is murdered or is missing, it's people always usually are quick to go to the spouse that is still alive or still around. And I think in this case, there's a lot of weirdness. Um... I just, I truly hope that regardless of the outcome, that Maya's family can finally put her to rest. I hope her body can be found. I don't believe she is still alive. She loved her children so much, and she was working on being free from her marriage. I don't think she would have just disappeared or killed herself. So I do think that something must have happened to her, as in someone did something to her. Um, what exactly? I can't, ex I can't speculate because we... We just don't know what happened to her. Um, but I do hope that the family gets what they're looking for. I hope that justice is screwed in some form of fashion. And I hope that should he be guilty, he rots in prison for the rest of his life. And if it turns out that he is an innocent man, then I hope that he is free. And that whoever actually did this will be found and justice can be served so that is what i think um let me know what you guys think like i said all the links that i use for research will be down below and i will see you guys in my next video um bye guys thank you so much for listening to my story <music>